Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Tony Soto Show. My name is Tony Soto. Shout out to all my Patreons who like to watch me do this live. <clears throat> Excuse me. How are we all doing? Welcome back. It's good to be back. Beautiful autumn day in Southern California. I couldn't be happier. This is the reason we move here, is from what I hear. This is the reason we move here. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who are not here, oh, I know there is winter happening. There is like winter happening in, in other parts of the country. And I'm telling you, I don't think I'd be able to manage. I don't think I would be able to manage. Like snow already at this time? Are you crazy? Oh, guys, we lost a good gay. We lost a good gay this week. We lost Leslie Jordan. Leslie Jordan is that sassy little Southern actress from the Will and Grace and uh, passed away this week, crashed, had probably had a medical emergency and then crashed into a store in um, Hollywood or West Hollywood. Really tragic way for such a fun um unapologetic queer to go out you know it's like it's just it's just a shame because uh well you know the the beautiful someone someone had actually mentioned it in a story and i was like oh yeah that's true it's like um you could just at any given point see uh leslie driving around you could see leslie uh walking up and down santa monica shopping or whatever whatever i mean uh he was he was present in Southern California, um, outside of being present on television and whatnot. So uh, tremendous loss, sad, 67, 67. That's young, y'all, 67 is young. This is the thing these days, like I remember, you know, I was thinking about this, um, well, I think about this regularly to be quite honest, is about like, you know, what 42 looked like when I was growing up, like when I saw 42 year olds, when I was growing up, I mean, these people were old, they were old. And that has since changed. We're not, we're not like, you know, one of the best things about life now is, is getting older and, and still, uh, 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 trying to capture that youthful essence, but 67 in general is not, um, old. And, you know, the beautiful thing about Leslie Jordan is he is one of those veteran gays that survived the 80s and the 90s. You know what I mean? Um, when we had so many creative people who uh, were killed as a result of AIDS. So RIP Queen, RIP. Gone too soon. Is that the goal? Like, that's the question. You know, what is that thing? Like, die young, play hard. I don't really know what the sayings are. But, like, is the goal to go out young? I don't know. I mean, look, I always say that 80 is fine for me. Like, 80 years old uh, is good. I'll go to 90 if I'm still using the bathroom myself. You know, that's the thing. Honestly, that is the thing that that I, uh, the, the moment, and I've said this, and I probably have said this on this show. But the moment the nethers go kaput, like the moment I have to walk into my local Walgreens and buy some mailed pens, that is the moment where I'm like, well, I mean, life is done, right? Like, life, because like, here's the thing I am a single man. I don't have someone to change my butt, you know, if I get to the point where I can't. Also, I've not planned properly for retirement. So which means I'm not going any place fancy when I when I'm an invalid. Oh. Oh, it's so scary to think. So scary to think. Doomed. Um no, oh, I just got a glimpse of my fucking zit on my nose. Uh see, this is what you get if you can pay if you pay the Patreon, you get to see me with all of the blemishes that come with me. Uh it's so funny. I hate it. So I have um 
some anxiety issues and some depression issues. She's a bit mentally ill, but you know what? I don't like to harp on it, but there are occasions when I get really um, anxiety ridden and God forbid a blemish form on my face because I'm going to get it and I'm going to butcher it and beat it. And then I'm going to regret it uh, uh, while it heals. That's, that's me. That's the ride that we're on together. Um, oh my gosh, guys, people are pro testing. People are still throwing soup on things <clears throat> and gluing themselves to stuff. No one has yet taken my um, idea of r- real oil in front of oil companies, however. But, you know, I am a big fan of The View. Now, The View, if you've been living under the rock for the past 25 seasons, is an opinion show with female voices telling us their opinions on uh, uh, pop culture, politics, religion, you know, all the things we want to hear. And uh, this week, I believe it was the Monday show, has to be because I'm recording this on Tuesday. The Monday show was chaos because they had uh, a walking thumb and grade A pussy, Ted Cruz, on to hawk a book and to spread misinformation regarding whatever the fuck the Republicans want you guys to believe. Uh, But there was a protest. I mean, and I thought, first I was like, well, there's no Joy Behar, which means she must have been like, I don't even want to fuck with this guy, which I get. Um, Second, uh, I thought I thought the problems would be coming from within the house. You know, I thought that these ladies would be on it, ready to fucking pounce and dig into Ted Cruz. No, 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 no. Um, it was the audience. It was the audience. There was someone who was standing up and was like, how dare you talk about, you need to talk about climate change instead of giving a platform to one of the biggest climate desi- cl- t- ugh, climate change des- deniers that there are. And I was like, yeah, I I agree with that. And honestly, I feel like that protest was uh, more effective than soup on a Van Gogh. I don't know. I think you reached more of an audience. Now, I watched it live. So I get up and watch it on the internet so I can get it on the East Coast feed. Because I don't know what the West Coast feed got. I don't know if they were able to edit it because the protest was going during the interview and what was so awkward is they kept trying to do the interview and it's like acknowledge and then whoopi did acknowledge she's like let us do our jobs blah 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 blah. come on whoopi you know what your job would be to be like like not just try to uh push through an interview with a stupid thumb talking about fucking nonsense but what am i what do i know i don't fucking know a thing um but i have to say there's so much talk whenever that show loses a Republican uh, uh, correspondent. There's so much talk when, uh, like when Megan left or when that stupid Elizabeth Hasselpack was there or God, that uh, uh, Jada, Jita, Jitta, I don't know. All crap. I haven't seen a good fucking conservative conservative on there ever. Anyway, um, truth be told, Yes, it's a liberal leaning show, sure. Uh, and I'm sorry I'm going this deep on the view, everybody, but you know, it is my life. Um, it is a liberal leaning show, but there are not a lot of savvy political liberal pundits on that show. Like they they all have liberal leaning thoughts, absolutely. But you know, the smartest person, well, I don't even want to say, I mean, the lawyer, the one who is closer to politics, I guess, than any other, is a practicing Catholic. So therefore, she's already out of the running. You know, she's in a cult. So it's like you can only take so much uh, from Sunny because she believes in Ooga Booga. So when you believe in invisibility, you immediately lose cred- credibility. Ooh. When you believe in invisibility, you immediately lose credibility. Did I just coin that? Did I just coin that? Was that just coined? Or has that been coined? I don't know. Consider it coined. Um, but and and don't me wrong, I like all of the 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 pundits. I like all the ladies. I like all the the the, the chat. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to have someone who like Ted Cruz, who is 
so well versed in a being an asshole and being unlikable because nobody likes him but he's also really really good on his talking points he reads his morning cult memo every morning and gets it so when you're going to have someone like that who is going to lie repeatedly 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 um you need to have a politically savvy liberal-minded woman on that panel who can hold him to task and be like this is why what you just said was incorrect my opinion um speaking of politics let's keep going in the in the realm of politics because i'm a little disturbed about what's going on in arizona if i have any arizona listeners and i don't know if it's anywhere past arizona but i believe arizona is the one who's making the news um these fucking these uh QAnon people <clears throat> that are like camping out by polling places or by like drop boxes and whatnot for early voting. Um, they're parked out there with their uh, license plates covered. Uh, they're in masks and whatnot. Uh, and they're like, they're armed and they're sitting in front of places where people go to drop off their ballots and they're intimidating people. They're yelling at them or whatever. And recently a woman um, confronted them and like, took the uh the cover off of their license place and and here's my thing you QAnon fucks and especially you QAnon fucks in Arizona because Arizona is an important state I mean it truly is and unfortunately I think it's going to go in the way of stupid but um <clears throat> I hope not I'm I hope not Arizona I'm rooting for you I, I hope that you fucking uh make the right decision but um here QAnon folks and these fucking 405 Nazis and whatnot, wh whatever is happening. Why are you covering your face? Why are you covering your face? This is what makes you and your cause such bullshit, is that if you have the cojones to back it up, if you have the cojones to lose your job, because you know that's what would happen when everyone found out that you're a racist piece of shit, um, or an election de uh, denier who likes to fucking uh, uh, harass fucking regulars that are just trying to vote. Like, if that is you, uncover your face. Let us see you. You proud? Don't you believe in what you're standing up for? Don't you think that what you're doing is right? Then come on, revolutionary. Oh, you're such a revolutionary, you fucking pussy. Do you think that these people in the revolutionary days, uh, whether it be right or wrong side, on whatever side they were, they were covering their fucking faces? Well, the clan was. But, oh, you're the clan. There you go. You're the fucking clan. And you know that your shit is fucking wrong because if you didn't if you were truly proud about it you would have your faces uncovered and you'd be out there but you know you look like an inbred mouth breather uh who doesn't know how to read books <sighs> speaking of books um uh well, i don't know if the book is actually turning 30 but the sex book by madonna <gasps> and the well i'm going to say the erotica album by madonna turned 30 years old this year and I think it was a collab. I think it was the same time. I think it was the erotica and the sex book came out at the same time. So yeah, so 30 years, we'll say of both. And, um, you know, I just want, uh, before we go to break, to uh, just reaffirm um, how iconic Madonna is because she's gotten some flack recently because she posted something on her social media being like, look, 30 year anniversary of erotica in the sex book. I did this. I showed this. Um, I was doing this and I suffered a lot of fucking flack and hatred for what I did. And now as a result, all these other people like the Kim Kardashians and the Miley Cyruses and the Cardi B's can come out with their very explicit stuff. And not that they don't receive backlash as well, but it's more accepted within the mainstream. You know, you can't fucking change the religious nutbags and conservatives. Listen, they're going to stay stupid. It's what they want. They don't want to wake up. They like to be asleep. But I'm thinking about this. You know, Erotica is one of my top five favorite albums ever. Erotica is one of the best albums, I think, out there and one of Madonna's best. Um, every song on there is a banger. You can't do drag to any of them because they're over six minutes long. So she knew what she, she was doing to begin with, bless her heart. Um, and it really did mold and shape a 13-year-old gay Tony Soto. 
30 years ago, I was 13. That's fucked up. It's fucked up to think. Um, but like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, it's like, I knew I shouldn't have been listening to erotica. I knew that like um, uh, the the higher ups and the and adults would be like, uh, that is not what you should be listening to. Purity, purity, purity. But I'm going to tell you, I have more liberal ideas and thoughts about sex now because of Madonna. And she's right to be able to tell people you're fucking welcome, bitches. Why not? And leave her fucking face alone. When you're as rich as Madonna, you can look as ridiculous as you want. All right. How dare you all like come for her and her choices on what she obviously paid outright for. You know what? You're broke and you're sad and you're jealous. All right. And that's all I have to say about that. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we are back with the show. Oh my God, I saw that there were uh, three people watching me live on YouTube right now. Three of my, my uh, oh wait, am I unmuted? Uh, three of my loving Patreon subscribers are watching right now. And I was like, oh shit, I just gotta get back. But I've been spending the day uh, pre-cleaning for my cleaning lady. <laughs> You know, and uh, I forgot that I washed my ashtray and so I had to get it so I could continue to smoke weed so I could continue to talk into the abyss or not the abyss to three of my devoted Patreon subscribers. Thank you. Um, so I don't know if I have made this clear to the world, but I am a drag queen for hire. That's right. I am. Hire me. I will do anything <laughs> there's a the list of things i won't do are very very small uh but i am for hire and i, I do from time to time get uh random gigs out of nowhere and uh i actually got a random gig this last weekend which turned out to be i mean just just the funnest hour uh i've had in a while uh so shout out to maxwell esposito former co-host of here the Tony soda show uh because he had gotten a dm from someone who uh knew knows him through the interwebs uh and was looking for a drag queen for a bridal shower now um because it's been such uh not the easiest bounce back career wise since covid i literally don't i'm not lying when i say what you got i'll do it so maxwell texted me he's like would you be into this and i was like uh if they don't care about uh this price then yes so they did not they did not care about the price so i ended up going to now i always want to call it treasure island and that's not what it is it is and it's not sherman oaks it's something oaks oh god i forgot it again I, it's not treasure oaks either to it's not topanga oak anyway i was outside of calabasas oh i fucking, I it was literally in my head before the court see it's because i forgot that ashtray 
and it just threw everything out of the window. Well, anyway, maybe it's good that I don't say the town. I was just outside of the Calabasas for a bridal shower. Um, and uh, first, I was a surprise. So it's nothing like uh, being rushed into a home and then uh, pushed into an at-home gym and is like, and they're like, um, can you just hang out here for a second? Um, so I go to this thing, we get there, I go into this home gym, I start getting ready, but then I find out that they're like, they're like 20 or 30 minutes back behind. So now that's a humbling moment for a drag queen when you're like, you know what, my job, you know, at a gay bar, I would be... <laughs> At a gay bar, I would not just be sitting at a home gym, you know, what I mean, waiting to go on. But um, uh, it was just so funny because I'm like, oh, this is the humbling moment. This is where, you know, these are the situations that remind you that what you do is work. It isn't all make-believe. You are not royalty. And uh, sit tight because they'll call you when they need you, clown. And uh I mean, it's all, and also there was like moments because like, the, the caterers didn't know my name. So they just kept calling me the drag queen. Uh, they're like, uh, where is the drag queen? Oh, here I have the drag queen's fan. Oh, here is the drag queen's money. Um, but anyway, so I it, it, it comes to be my time. I go out. There is a fabulous Real Housewives outdoor catered food set up. Uh, a bunch of stunning ladies in their finest, just three sheets. You know what I mean? I mean, bless the bless the future bride. She was three sheets. And, and I loved her for it. Because here's the thing. When I was hired, it was like, okay, you're going to do this number. Well, first they were like, can you do these wedding numbers? Like going to the chapel or whatever. I'm like, listen, I'm a spinster. Like don't ask a spinster to do a wedding song. It's triggering. Um, so I do a song and then they're like, we will we'll ultimately have you play a game with the mother of the bride or something. And then you'll bring out the groom and, you know, it'll be an event. Um, it's so funny on how many of these freelance things that I get where they're like, here is the plan. This is going to be the plan. Here's your structure plan. And now, gr granted, I love that. I want structure. I want to know what you want to do. Um, but more often than not, that structure goes right out the fucking window. Because so I do my number on grass, ladies. I know some of you listen. You told me you'd be listening. You asked a drag queen to perform on grass. I had to kick off my shoes. I had to kick off my shoes. I had to kick off my shoes. They were tipping. I loved it. So, uh, so I did my number, and then I immediately just start chatting with them. Like I have a seat. I, <laughs> I basically just have a seat, and I get the tea. I'm like, I'm like. Uh, oh, well, well, I was like, so when is the wedding? The wet, I can say the wedding date because it, it it's uh, December 2nd. And I was like, oh my God, my birthday's on December 3rd. Oh my God, that's really amazing. I love a great date. I, that's Britney Spears' birthday. I don't know if you meant that, but congrats. Um, found out that it was a destination wedding uh, to Mexico. And I was like, oh, raise your hands if you're mad about that. And there was raised hands. We found out that there, <laughs> I might have stirred some pots. Uh, and then I found out there was no uh, no bridal party. There's no matron of honor. She's not a traditionalist. And listen, I am just sitting here eating it up, getting all the tea from fabulous bitches and sunglasses and like, and like dresses and just, and it was chilly. So then the homeowner just kept bringing out fabulous coats for all of our fabulous friends. Um, but, you know, I, I just love situations like that because quite frankly, uh, and one of the biggest compliments I got uh, during that time was uh, from a person who owns an events company. And she's like, it's just amazing how you can go in uh, to a group of strangers that you don't know and uh, and start up a conversation and just hang out. And I'm like, look, 
If there is one thing that I know how to do is ask a question. And when it is people who fascinate me, i.e. rich, white, probably Republican women, I am ready to ask questions. I'm ready to see their reactions to my questions. I'm ready to see who is eager to answer. Like, girl, I that is my element. You know what I mean? That is my element. My element is talking to people who I find interesting. Now, do I skirt a line in those situations sometimes? Absolutely. I go right back to when I went to that diaper party. Remember when I went to that diaper party, folks? I had my investigative hat on, girl. I was going up to people asking why. I was like, I was going up to people going, are you going to take that off tonight? Are you just going to sleep through the night and let it go? These are the questions I want to know. And these are the questions that I want to report back to people when I say I was at a diaper party. Or bridal shower, or whatever. It's all the same fucking thing to me. I'll tell you, I. It's funny that I, anyone would think to even choose me to do anything regarding a uh, heteronormative situation like a uh, marriage. It helped that the bride was like, I, you know, this, this, this. I'd rather, I'd rather chew glass than do any of this stuff. And I was like, yes bitch. I love it. But you could tell that she had an amazing support system of, uh, of female energy there. The mom was there. The future mom in law was there. The conservative auntie was there. The one who didn't want is, is probably not going to Mexico, probably not going to Mexico. That one, you know? Um, Oh, and they have like one of those fucking like super annoying like back love stories. You know what I mean? Like they've known each other since the middle school. Then they fucking were just friends. And then they came back after college or something. I don't know. I could be making some stuff up. I did have a vodka. But like, like then they met back up and they like, and then they were like, hey, let's hang out. And then all of a sudden they're like getting married. So, I mean, I don't know how the heterosexuals do it like the, is this how the gays do it like i know that like the whole idea of having an like a, a, a visible gay relationship is not um not terribly new but it's not fucking it's not old hat but like is this how it works i mean everyone who i fucked in high school is not going to re-up with me and be like uh let's get married well that's probably because they're already married <laughs> And you know, I don't want to fuck with anyone with kids. <laughs> oh, the very few times, oh, I'm going to tell you, whenever I go back to Clinton and I run into someone who I definitely had sex with, um, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you were hot. Like they were. Like that was the thing. Like I didn't fuck around with ugly hillbillies. Like no. Like I'm, I feel like I feel like for the trade that I pulled when I was young, they were hot. They were hot. Oh my God, did I just go completely off? <laughs> what were you talking about? Oh yeah, bridal showers. I love how I will turn bridal showers into park blow jobs. Uh, I'm just like. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 let's talk about your wedding. Or let's talk about my last hookup on Sniffies. Um, whatever, whatever. We we all do our own things. But thank you to that bridal shower. And please do not think that anything I said today was in any way uh, shady about the situation. Because I left there knowing things that I should not know. Um, having eaten food that I could not have afforded and drank liquor that I didn't have to pay for. So, and you guys paid me obscenely well. Like, shout out to drunk, white, some conservative, some liberal women. I'll tell you, they if they have it, they give it to you. But I did look gorgeous, and I did deserve, like, every dollar I got. Um... See, I'm thankful, but also realistic about, yes, they were right to hire me. They were right to hire me. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what else? Well, I guess that, I mean, shit, I guess that's uh, pretty much it. I was going to, uh, what happens when you have three minutes left? <laughs> <laughs> oh i guess in my three minutes i can talk to uh my listeners 
about Battle Babies. Um, so look, guys, truth be told, uh, you know, Tony Soto feels some insecurities at times when it comes to uh, projects that I create and produce. Now, I'm aware that Battle Babies st has started. We're going to be our fourth week uh, Wednesday. Uh, if you're listening, that is today. If you're watching, that is tomorrow. Um, it'll be the fourth week. We launch in October. It's going through the holiday season. It's a it, it's it's. Uh, it's it's a great show. The performers are so fucking good and they so want it and they're so entertaining. And Maxwell and I have created this show that is so um, fun and interactive with the audience. It lets me like chill with you guys and laugh with you guys. And this is my plea to ask people if you are in the Southern California area or if you are visiting L.A., um, and it falls on a Wednesday, come to Battle Babies at Stash at 10 p.m. Because, um, you know, we want to be around <laughs> next year. And truth be told, the bar has to make money so I can make money. So I'm just saying, if you have time and the money, come out to Stash every Wednesday or a Wednesday at 10 p.m. and watch Battle Babies. Um, sponsored by Sir Serve Vodka. So, and soon uh, there will be guest appearances from the game show girls that have liquor uh, under Serve. So be ready and um, able to check that out. Follow Learn the Words Bitch on Instagram because that's where you get all the info because it's like, do I make another fucking Instagram? These are the questions I have that I don't even really care the answer to. I know I don't want to make another fucking Instagram. Let me know. Do I need to make another Instagram? Go to the Tony Soto show uh, and uh, dot com and go to the ask button. And you can ask me anything, guys. If you guys have anything to, to ask, I don't do listener questions anymore. But if you hear something that I say, since I'm basically doing this alone, um, and you agree or disagree, let me know, because uh, I don't mind uh, furthering the dialogue on this show. I do what the fuck I want. It's mine. Um, if you enjoy The Tony Sutter Show, please go to our iTunes, my iTunes page and subscribe, rate, leave a comment. It does help. I'm The Tony Sutter Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, I think that's it. Oh, have a happy Halloween, everybody. Be safe uh, because that's this weekend. And uh, I'll be back again next week. Bye.